It's like one big, never-ending math problem. But we've got one more solution, one more speaker. Uh, she's well-respected in the League of Women Voters at the national level for uh, working on a graduated income tax. Uh, please welcome Jean Pierce. To reiterate the uh, uh, theme that you're hearing, it's not a pension problem. We have a revenue problem. And uh, uh, many of you who are familiar with the League may realize that, indeed, we haven't finished finalizing our position on the state pension uh, issue, but it is a revenue problem. The way I define it is, instead of raising money, the state has been robbing from Peter, the pensioners, including me, to pay Paul, cover basic services, and now the state is blaming Peter for its lack of funds. <laughs> so there are three uh, basic causes of the state's budget deficit. Flawed tax policy, irresponsible fiscal practices, and the Great Recession. I'm primarily going to be focusing on the first two. Uh, and the, the theme, as we said, was to argue for a graduated rate income tax. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, the thing is that when you have a flat income tax, doesn't it just sound fair? Everyone's being taxed at the same rate? Let's look at what actually happens. When you look at not only income tax, but sales, excise, and property tax as well, families earning less than $18,000 are paying 13.7% of their income in taxes in Illinois. Third highest tax burden for low-income families in the nation, as opposed to families earning $129,900, paying less, 9.5%, and for all of you who are in the 500,000 or more, you're only paying 5.3% of your income in these combined taxes in Illinois. So currently, millionaires in Illinois pay a lower effective tax rate than anyone else earning more than $9,000. So, you know, if you're a millionaire, then, then why is this a problem, okay? Well, the point is that we're asking people in the lower and middle classes to pay proportionately more taxes, and yet they're the ones who spend most or all of their income on basics, food, housing, and so on. On the other hand, the upper classes are saving most of their income. It's not coming back into the economy. So we keep hearing, but, but raising taxes is going to kill jobs. It's going to frighten people away. In actuality, the two states with the lowest taxes in the Midwest, Illinois and Missouri, had the lowest GDP growth after uh, the, the recession of 2008-2009, while the states with the highest marginal individual income tax uh, compared to states with no income tax had more value added by industries. Okay, the second issue was fiscal irresponsibility. According to Governor Quinn's own website, the funding crisis is the result of the deliberate underfunding of pensions year after year, a practice as old as the pension funds themselves, dating back to the creation of the first pension fund, Teachers Retirement System in 1939. Now, part of this fiscal irresponsibly uh, responsibility has been a consistent underfunding of education over the past 12 years. Now, you'll hear some uh, representative senators say, oh, wait a minute, wait, no, we're paying more for education. In nominal dollars, yes, but if you look at dollars that are adjusted for inflation, no. Compared to 2000, we are paying 9% less for education in our state. And this relates to another fact that our state is funding education at more than $2,000 less than is needed for an adequate uh, education, $2,000 per student less. Okay, now a, an adequate basic education means only two-thirds of the people succeed anyway. This is a travesty. This has been, and you can see the the extreme difference between what EFAB, the Education Funding Advisory Board, recommends as opposed to what the state is currently 
uh, spending per, per student. So why is it irresponsible? I mean, the state's response typically has been to cut spending in education and other basic human services. Why is this irresponsible? According to Mark Zandi, the chief economist for Moody's, for every dollar spent on core public services, the economy gets back a dollar 36. Because investing in these core public services like education creates jobs for people who spend their income on goods and services. Now, as we've heard, this bill would shift a portion of the state's contribution requirement to school districts. So why is that a problem? Well, as, as someone mentioned previously, Illinois is already 50th at the bottom, not, not 50th at the top, 50th at the bottom, among the states in the amount of education funding provided by the state. Okay, so let's look at what this means. According to our Constitution, Illinois is supposed to be paying, it's responsible for paying 50% of the uh, cost of education in the state. So in many states, the, the royal blue there uh, indeed shows that, yeah, those states are paying approximately 50%. The light blue is the federal, the, what is that, aqua, is uh, property tax. But then you look over at Illinois. From state uh, our case law, what's happened is that they've decided, no, 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 the state doesn't actually have to pay that 50%. They just have to make sure that that 50% is paid by someone, you know? So now we have the Fed still giving us 10%. We have the state paying approximately 27%. And it's no surprise to all of you that our property taxes are through the roof with, because they're picking up 63% of the funding of education. Okay, so why is this a problem for local districts to pay most of the cost for education? This is a, a major theme of us in the, at the uh, state level in, in uh, the League of Women Voters. The problem is that we have this tremendous inequity in educational spending uh, between the low and high poverty districts. So the wealthiest districts are able to raise on average almost $5,000 more per pupil than the highest poverty districts. This is bizarre. We live in a wealthy state. We can go on to the next one to save time. The point is that we are underfunding schools, and this is leading to uh, more dropouts. Uh, and that cause the, the uh, Schott Foundation has determined that dropouts are costing our society $200 billion a year in lost wages and taxes, costs for social services, and crime. And so we're all paying for the underfunding of education in our state. This isn't logical, okay? We live in one of the wealthiest states in the country. The annual economy in Illinois is $650 billion. If we were a country, we'd be the 27th largest country. We'd be our, our, our largest economy, I should say. Our economy would be larger than Saudi Arabia, Norway, Sweden, and, and a bunch of others. Okay. so. Once again, we need this graduated rate income tax. Now, that sounds like some kind of a commie socialistic plot, right? Okay, who first? <laughs> Look at this quote from Adam Smith, the father of modern capitalism. The subjects of every state ought to contribute toward the support of the government as nearly as possible in proportion to their respective abilities. He went on to quote from Henry Holm that the goal of taxation should be to remedy the inequality of the riches as much as possible by relieving the poor and burdening the rich. This was Adam Smith. So certainly there are different uh, uh, solutions that have been proposed. This is one that Ralph Martiri uh, has proposed and it really appeals to me because it's reducing taxes on 94% of the people while raising 
$2.4 billion. So the point is that unless you're making over $150,000, uh, your taxes are not going to increase with a graduated rate. It, we're, we're really talking about uh, taxing the super rich. And last one. Okay, much of the data for this comes from uh, the Center for Tax and, and Budget Accountability. Thank you.